Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of uh, Marina Fertova, uh, we would like to welcome you to this precursor to a fantastic exhibition that we will be having very soon. Um, and this uh, podcast episode that is based on uh, the uh, Ethereal Echoes exhibition, which we will be having uh, at Centria Mall in this great uh, concept store, uh, Moxie's concept store in Riyadh. Uh, really quite a contemporary space, I must say. So starting with Marina, uh, Marina, please tell us a little bit more about uh, how you started uh, getting into art, uh, the dynamics of how you champion the, the modern woman through your art, uh, and your approach of traditional art uh, joining uh, digital and uh, contemporary art. I'm really happy to join uh, today's talk and uh, participate in this uh, great project. Uh, and first of all, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit more about uh, our Cosmo Dream project that we, for six years uh, we are working at. Uh, two main topics are space and woman. Why space? Uh, I think uh, we live in this time when uh, space is in the air spaces around us. Recently, we celebrated the 60th uh, anniversary of uh, first uh, human fly in the space. Uh, uh, we are always talking now about uh, hotels in space, there are moon base, uh, there are Mars exploration. So uh, for me, it's a very interesting and intriguing topic. Uh, our project broadly combines different um, uh, different aspects such as traditional painting and uh, contemporary new te technologies as VR, AR, and uh, movies and uh, social media instruments. Uh, uh, why is the woman? First of all, I am the woman and I admire a woman. I like to tell the woman's story. And again, uh, about the space, a uh, woman is a forefront. Uh, we all know the uh, Tereshkova, who was the first woman uh, flying space. And now, for example, a Mars mission, 80% are women, including the cheer woman. So my woman, she is like a wonder woman. She can even fly in a space without a costume. She can implement her dreams. And uh, yeah, I'm telling the stories. Okay, fantastic. The, the modern contemporary woman. Speaking of the woman and speaking of uh, the, our esteemed Sally designer, who is also very, uh, established and dressing a lot of beautiful women. Uh, tell us, uh, Yusuf, we're doing a great collaboration also with uh, Yusuf Akbar, uh, with uh, Marina Verdova. Uh, we will get to the, uh, the part of where we're actually filming the, uh, the uh, we're doing actual collaboration. But tell us, what is your, uh, your approach towards merging art uh, and using your artwork as, as fashion or fashion as an artwork? Um. First of all, um, I, uh, it's very hard to kind of separate uh, fashion and art because in a way, um, I believe art is a way of self-expression and the way people dress is also a way of self-expression. And from my point of view as a designer, um, I wanted to be an artist all along as a little kid and I had no idea um, that you could also express yourself in other ways. And only until I studied fashion and the, in the and, and I understood the process of, you know, uh, uh, research, inspiration, uh, kind of interpreting references into um, clothes and cuts and details and prints. Only then I realized, wow, it's actually the same process of creating as as creating art. So I really don't see the difference uh, between art and fashion. I think it's kind of the same thing. It's just a different medium. Um, so I think it just comes naturally. Yeah. And tell us uh, a bit more about how you envisage your collaboration with uh, Marina on Ethereal Echoes. Uh, I mean, I'm not just saying this because uh, we're talking uh, with Marina and about Marina's work, uh, uh, but um, her work is super beautiful. It's very inspiring. 
Um, there's a lot of parallels between what I do and what she does. Um, a lot of what she does is inspired by women, and the same thing for me. I mean, I am a man, but I'm designing for women's wear, and the women's wear I design is actually inspired also by a lot of the special women in the world and in my life. Uh, specifically, you know, one example is my mother. You know, she, in my opinion, she is superwoman, and a lot of Marina's art is about incredibly strong women um, in kind of um, strong settings, um, looking all powerful. So um, it's definitely an easy kind of connection and a collaboration from my part because I think it just kind kind of merges naturally, and interpreting her art into fashion. Uh, from the form of painting to clothes, um, it's been an easy job. So um, it's kind of fun to do and, and really nice um, to kind of um, work with artists who also value women and, 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 and things that I'm inspired to in, in similar subject, subjects that I'm inspired. We're all very excited uh, with lots of enthusiasm for the <coughs> exhibition which will be held on the 24th in October. Uh, but thinking of uh, some of the inspirations that we've had with uh, Marina, which is Ihsa Oasis, mm -hmm. uh, a location that is really uh, magical, which uh, Marina also used in some of her paintings and also inspired by some of the dresses of which uh, Yusuf Akbar has created. Uh, you are known for someone who uh, takes the local gems and uh, celebrates them. But you're also known for someone who looks at things from different lenses as well. Uh, you had mentioned that you had been living in Australia for quite some time, and when you came back, you had a bit of a culture shock. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you created your art. So uh, it would be interesting to just give us a little bit more feedback on how you, you uh, the process of you coming up with the, the art that you create, and mm -hmm. how do you choose your destinations? Uh, OK. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me, Hatem, on this. Uh, it can be a very easy way to explain it, actually. And I will just put it on the table this way. Um, two stages of it. The first stage was arriving to Medina, not being sure of how things will be, where I'm going, where I'm heading, after graduation, and then just getting back to my own city and my own country. And then I started to find my joy in the small explorations in the city itself, around Medina. In Medina and around Medina. It happened that I used photography to communicate my feelings, my thoughts on my findings, or as we maybe mentioned that once or twice, the culture shock. Mm -hmm. But at that time, using social media to post on and show m what is my mind reflecting through what I'm seeing, exploring around, and then putting uh, the finding in social media. Once seeing that is adding to my curiosity, adding to my, it feeds in my passion, at the same time, the interaction between me and the visuals and uh, audiences that are watching this, this, these findings and outcomes and photographs, it took me into different levels of expanding this search. And that will take us to the second part of the question, uh, the second part of how which is basically opening Google Maps, really finding and searching on what is really unique from up there, and just straight uh, forward going to that destination. And uh, through that journey, until reaching there, the content been created and uh, all of these tiny explorations took a place. So technology as a compass. Oh yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Especially Google Maps and uh, with different uh, helps of my team, actually, our team, another part of this journey yeah. that this team supported these explorations. And we started to fly and to take, personally flying with our captain and our team and seeing things from above gives a different perspective on things, yeah. Fantastic. And um, going back to technology, uh, Marina, uh, how would you manage to keep a balance between your traditional art uh, and the art that you exposed uh, with your obviously very uh, notorious project, Cosmo Dreams, of linking your art with uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and really going into the universe of the actual ar uh, art itself. H how does that, how do you manage to do that? <coughs> Ironically, I'm a very conservative artist, uh, and I never thought I'm going to do such things as virtual reality. Uh, for me, 
canvas, oil on canvas was always essential. But here we find out that uh, maybe art is a little bit out of mode today. And then we need to create these bridges uh, between uh, old traditional art and younger generation who, I'm sorry, stuck in their gadgets. So that's why we decided to create this AR scenarios. So pointing uh, your phone on, on the painting, you can see how paintings become a alive, uh, how appears the story, what is behind the canvas. So with these tools, and I think that uh, digital uh, technology is a new tool in the palette of the artist. We just try to attract uh, more visitors, uh, more to interest more people. Uh, and um, for me, it's very important that uh, real painting is still uh, the, the main uh, topic in my art. So also speaking about new technologies, I would like to say that it wouldn't be possible uh, if I would be alone. It's a great, it's a big work of a team and there are a lot of steps. Uh, so I'm, I'm starting with a painting that then I'm creating a scenario. I, I'm doing a lot of small sketches, how to, to ex explain what is, what's going on in my head. And then a lot of work, people are working on it. Uh, first, the uh, 3D models are created, then uh, animation done. So it's a, it's a really huge work and it's uh, become possible uh, uh, only to the team I'm working with, but I'm really, really appreciate this. There's also a very uh, unique sculpture that... Uh, it's a compromise. Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. It's a compromise yeah. for me. For sure, yeah. There's also a very unique sculpture that we're going to be uh, witnessing at the exhibition. Uh, Marina is also quite uh, skilled at creating really unique, authentic, authentic sculptures, so we look forward to seeing that as well. But Yusuf, tell us, what, what's your creative process? And especially when it comes to this collaboration with uh, Marina on Ontario Echoes, what, what was was the the beginning of the uh, the process itself? Um, usually, for me, uh, the only way for me to be creative is for me to have some kind of emotional connection. And as I mentioned before, you know, uh, seeing all the women that she's inspired by, uh, the subject of the woman itself, um, it was easy for me to connect and to relate to special women in my life. And from then, you know, I would look at the colors she uses, the settings she uses, um, and also the connection to Saudi culture and uh, the inspiration from the oasis and all of this. So I was able to actually create some kind of picture, some kind of narrative, some kind of story that I connect with. And from then, I was able to use that in a form of fashion translated into cuts, into shapes, into embroideries. Would there be dresses it. also that will be kind of... Uh... Yes, so, so there will be dresses um, and um, we're translating a lot of her colors that she uses in her paint, a lot of her uh, backgrounds and, and, and compositions into um, embroidery, colorful mm -hmm. embroidery that will be in the form of a dress. So it will be very rich in texture, it will be very rich visually, just like her paintings. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Can't wait to see it. Uh, Moath, what is your um, definition of uh, the, uh, the new age photography that's happening? Yani, is there a certain way where you can uh, modernize it? Is there any way where you thought of working with VR? Or is this a movement that you would think of doing besides mm -hmm. using as a compass? It is always good and amazing and thrilling to experiment to challenge yourself. Um, I always ho I've always been calling for like, even when I have small talks with the young generation or the young artist, uh, experimentation is the key. Yeah. Uh, new mediums, the, the, the science, the AI, everything happening, uh, gives you a very wider uh, opportunities to challenge yourselves and to actually come up with the new creations. So um, yeah, maybe uh, recently I just got back to, to actually work a little bit more than usual on photography. And uh, yeah, I have this interest in AI and what's happening here and there or different mediums even. So um, hopefully in the next few maybe months we'll be experimenting myself with different mediums and uh, with the help of different techniques maybe. So, yeah. 
Okay, fantastic. Um, Marina, what's, uh, what's the next uh, step that's going to be taken into creating the exhibit that we have here? Are we going to be using any particular ways where we can actually see the art through, through a virtual reality? And what about Sputnik uh, group? I think that they are the ones who are kind of adding the more, more elements into resonating the art that we're doing. Could we hear a bit more about them? Uh, on uh, Cosma Dreams in uh, 2017, I was introduced to Sputnik Partners. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary design house and art platform focused on exceptional design product and art related activities. From beginning, I shared the same philosophy uh, that the company. We pr preserve, we cherish. Uh, another point uh, in our day society, um, there, there is not a lot of a patronage. And what is making Sputnik Partners exceptional that they support uh, artists, artisans, art related uh, uh, projects. So it kind of uh, social responsibilities uh, that uh, are so rare our days. Uh, so today uh, Sputnik House, it's not, not only a platformer, uh, it's not only uh, who created the Cosmo Dreams platform, there are uh, different projects. Uh, we are working with in a digital area and we are working with, uh, for example, French artisans and we're creating a high-end uh, design products uh, as well as uh, absolutely new uh, digital assets. So it's very, very multifunctional uh, company, I would say. Very wide. Uh, Yusuf, what, what advice would you give for a young entrepreneur that wants to kind of pursue fashion? And what other steps that you think should be taken, especially if they want to take those new steps that are being taken? Okay. Um, First of all, it's kind of tricky because it's not so clear. Um, so first of all, you need to kind of decide if you want to be an artist or if you want to sell. And two approaches are extremely different. I'm not saying that um, fashion can't be creative if you're selling, but if you want to start selling and actually have a business, you need to know exactly who you're selling to. And if there is a gap in the market that you can fulfill, and the most important out of all of these things is you need to find your own kind of uniqueness. And it sounds so simple, Signature. but it actually is extremely, extremely, extremely hard um, because it's not so obvious. Mm. And sometimes you don't even know it yourself. So you have to kind of discover it and not everyone does. Uh, but one thing for sure, every successful brand um, is very unique in its own way and it has to be recognizable and um, I'm sure we all can recognize some brands immediately when we see them so my advice to them is to be yourself because that way you can be unique and to find you know, you know your own little kind of niche and gap in the market so um, and it's a journey don't rush it that that's that's also the key for sure yeah. I always think that uh, creatives or designers, when, when they receive, uh, achieve success, is when you don't have to have a logo to know what the signature style, what the concept is. So it's always important to have that. Um, what, what, what would you say is, is clearly we know what your signature is, uh, you know, as far <laughs> as the discovering the hidden gems yeah. of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, really? Uh, well, how would you say you came up to this kind of uh, association of being so unique and, and, hmm. well, and authentic? Uh, yeah. As Yusuf mentioned now, uh, you have to be true to yourself. Spontaneity on all of this is, is a very important element. When you, it's a thin line between what is spontaneous, what is joyful, and what is being really conceived in a very struggling or like uh, tough situations or out of no creativity in a sense. Um, you just have to do what you really enjoy doing, you, um, I guess, and to be true to yourself, uh, and to be mindful sometimes on what you really want, as Yusuf mentioned. Uh, sometimes when it comes to art and money, for example, or when it comes to art and living, uh, what you really want to achieve and how you're gonna live 
it's really something you have to be managed yani, to manage it really well uh, being uh, on that romantic vision of like being an artist and uh, uh, self uh, taught self living upon or like totally just working for the art and the art field is different than like giving yourself uh, uh, the way of living or like something to actually feed you at the end of, of the day so yeah you have to be uh, to manage between both of them and uh, really f be true to yourself Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Marina how do you uh, manage to uh, see the reaction of your, uh, your audience when they see your art uh, clearly there must have been some instances where they saw some especially for example Cosmo Dreams the impact of turning your, your art into actual VR what were the reactions that we, uh, that we got from some of your uh, your uh, audience? In general, I hope uh, people like it. But honestly saying, I don't see any surprise anymore because I think audience is ready for this new experience. There are a lot of uh, projects with uh, virtual reality, with a 3D map and uh, on contrary, sometimes people are surprised to see that uh, my paintings are real, oil on canvas, because they thought they were created digitally for NFT or something like this. And when I said, no, it's a painting, it's two meter size. <laughs> so they are more surprised because a lot of painters uh, these days, uh, they just start to create um, digitally and uh, leaving behind uh, traditional techniques. So I'm. I'm keeping up. I'm trying to 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 prove that uh, they can coexist. Well, when I was in Salzburg, I was definitely blown away. I remember uh, there was uh, literally really going into the world itself. I never really realized how uh, how much of an impact it can have and how it can really elevate the, the mood. So we look forward to seeing it here. Asking my signature question, uh, starting with uh, Yusuf. You've, 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 we've mentioned this before, but let's give it a, let's give it a shot. What is authenticity to you? Authenticity simply is being yourself. Because if you're being yourself, by default you're unique. And if you're unique, you're authentic. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Muad, what is authenticity to you? Uh, I don't know, when you ask me this question, I remember there is this flash in my in front of me, like being in the desert in front of a rock. So oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, that is for me authenticity starting from there. But I mean, authenticity, don't force what is really not really yours into what is yours. Uh, just uh, cherish what you got and uh, elevate what you have from around your culture and uh, your own environment. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Make magic out of the actual uh, yes. status quo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, Marina, what is authenticity to you? <laughs> authenticity is a feeling. It's emotions that we transmit uh, in our artworks. Authenticity for me, it's a truth that uh, I transmit to the world. Absolutely. Well, uh, on that note, uh, we're very, very excited about our collaboration at Moxie's with Marina Ferdora, uh, based on uh, an oasis in Ihsa and also based on amazing collaborative uh, colors and concepts that uh, Marina and Yusuf are coming up with. So look forward to it on 24th uh, of November at uh, Century Mall at Moxie's. Thank you, Marina, for your, for your time. Thank you, Noah Moaz, and thank you, Yusuf. Really thank appreciate you. it. It's good to uh, yes. see thank all of you Thank you very much. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. Thank you. Thanks.